Hello everyone and welcome to this edition of the Dark Table from A to Z series. My name is Hal and today we're going to continue exploring the preferences and settings in Dark Table. In case you missed it, you can find a link to the first part below. In the first part we looked at the general, import, light table and dark room preferences. Today we're going to pick it up from here. Next we have the preferences for the other views, which we discussed last time got the map, geolocalization, and the slideshow. There's no, there are no preferences for printing here. All the preferences for printing were in the printing view. The first option is to limit the uh, images shown on the map. By default, when you go to the map view, you're going to see a, uh, all of your geotagged images on that map, everything in your collection. But if you click on this or select this option, you will only see the photos on the current film strip. That might be handy if you, if you just uh, want the current one and just uh, limits the number of images you see on the map and as well limits, limits the uh, processing time. However, if you want to look through all of your images and find them on the map, then I would leave that one unselected. Next, you have the maximum number of images drawn on the map. This is what well, it actually applies in both, uh, whether you actually have all of your images or just the current film strip. But it's more important when you have all of your images. If you zoom out, you don't want all of your images drawn on the map at the same time. So it will. This is the maximum number that will be shown. Of course, if you zoom in on or in onto a location, then this, the number of or the images that are drawn will be different and the, the more you zoom in the more you'll be able to pinpoint the images in a particular location. If you increase this number then representing the map will be slower. If you decrease it it will be faster but you will see a lot less images. The default is 100 which seems reasonable. If you have more than 100 locations, if you've made photos in more than 100 locations worldwide then you might want to to increase that number. Next you have a setting called pretty print the image location. The image location is printed next to an image. We can double click on everything to reset it as we've said as you can see here it's just to have a readable presentation of the location of the image in the image information module. I did not test it. The default is yes. I never had any problems with it. So we can leave it at that. Slideshow, you've got the waiting time between each each picture. You can change that um, dynamically in the slide while in the slideshow uh, view. Again, for more information, see the previous uh, video. And you can select whether you want a high quality processing for the slideshow or not. Again, high quality processing will require more computer resources. So uh, if it's not uh, if your slideshow is not um, responsive then you might want to disable that one. Next we have the processing preferences. The first option is related to color profiling. We will have a full video on color profiling. If you select this one it will use the little cms2 libraries instead of its own libraries for out co output color profiling. It can be better in some cases, but it is slower. Next, you have the pixel interpol interpolator. <laughs> the pixel interpolator. <laughs> Next, you have the pixel interpolator um, um, algorithm used when um, rotating images or in lens corrections. And you've got an options, all these options that are from the top to bottom, the better quality, slower processing. So you can choose whatever. Uh, well, of, of course, choose the best one if you can. And uh, you can go to, uh, to a uh, faster one if needed. Next, we have the root folder for the, LT, L, the 3D lots. Um, we're going to discuss that when we go through the 3D uh, lot uh, module. This is basically where they find these. You find these settings. So when you, in the module, when you um, 
uh, browse to select a uh, 3D LUT setting, this is the root folder that it will start with. If you've saved your uh, settings somewhere else, then you want to uh, change this one. Next, we have what uh, modules to auto apply. The default is display referred. Display referred enables the um, uh, base curve module by default, and this is the old um, pros the the old way of doing things. And you have the new way, which is scene referred, which uh, by default enables the exposure and the filmic modules. We're going to discuss all of the modules separately. And of course, the none, which would auto, uh, it will only the uh, auto enable the necessary modules and nothing extra. Afterwards, after that, you have the auto apply per camera base curve preset. The default is to apply the manufacturer's uh, uh, preset. This one will uh, apply a uh, per camera base curve, uh, base curve preset if available. Of course, this is only uh, useful if you've selected the display referred, which enables the base curve by default. After that, you've got the auto apply sharpen, which says exactly what, it, what which does exactly what it says. Next, we have the security preferences. First one is related to remo the removing images behavior, whether you want uh, dark, ta uh, dark table to confirm the action or not. Next is the same, but just for erasing them completely or for discarding the history stack. Then um, you have a setting whether uh, to send the images to a trash folder instead of deleting them completely. It's enabled by default. If you send them to trash, then you might be able to recover them. If you don't, then there you have to use a different software to try to recover them if you deleted them by default. The same apply. The same is for the uh, copying or moving and copying, and for removing empty folder. This one is disabled by default and so on and so forth for tags, styles and preset. It depends on uh, your preferences between uh, risk and speed. Uh, enabling those will uh, allow you to confirm an action and minimize the risk of you deleting or removing something by default and allowing you in some cases to recover something that you've deleted by default. But if the, uh, if the behavior uh, annoys you and uh, you want to get rid of the confirmation screen, then you can do that here. After that, we have the CPU, GPU, memory preferences. The first one is the memory in megabytes used for thumbnail cache. This is just used, of course, while you're using a uh, dark table. Afterwards, is, uh, you can enable a disk backend for thumbnail cache. So when the memory cache is used up, you can use some uh, hard disk space for thumbnails. Uh, one note though, uh, images that are, well, or thumbnail images that are evicted from memory and saved on disk are never deleted by uh, Darktable, but you can delete those manually if you want. The same applies for the preview cache. If you want, you can enable that and have all uh, full preview uh, cache um, saved on the hard disk as well. This makes it faster to uh, reprocess the same image if you want that. You could as well uh, use a command line prompt uh, to uh, generate thumbnails and cache and pre full preview cache for all of your images and save them on the hard disk if, if you value of speed while processing those images in dark, dark table. However, this will take a lot of disk space, so it's up to you. Next, we have the number of background threads. This is this is how many processing threads uh, th uh, dark table will uh, will use by default. Of course, more you use, the faster it will be if you if you process if you're doing multiple things at the same time. However, it will use up more of your uh, processor power. The next two are mainly, uh, therefore, uh, 
processing big images or lots of images in, um, on systems that don't have a lot of resources. The first one is the maximum amount of memory that will be given to a module for processing um, in tiling mode. That means that uh, module uh, that are memory hungry will be limited to this amount of memory per tile, which means that it will take longer, but at least you'll be able still to use your computer while processing images. The next is the minimum, which is the opposite, and this will this is just to override the system default. You don't have to mess with these things if your system is working properly. The next ones are related to OpenCL and using your graphics adapter uh, for processing as well. This helps, and if you're using Windows or Mac, I assume that these will be enabled by default. I'm running on Linux and I did not enable OpenCL on, on this uh, virtual machine, so I don't have them available. Next, we have the storage op options. And this relates to the uh, database that Darktable generates for your images. The first setting allows you to select when Darktable will do uh, database maintenance which is mainly defragmentation and other housekeeping tasks. The default is on close. You can select something else if for some reason you have problems with your database. And the next one is the, uh, the, the fragmentation ratio that will uh, generate a uh, defragmentation task. You don't have to actually change these unless you're having problems with your database. Next, we have the XMP, which the, def the default of this one is right side car file for each image. It means that each image will have a separate uh, uh, sidecar or XMP file for it in the, in, its, in the same directory. This allows you to import it in a different instance of uh, Darktable or in other software that support importing sidecars from, si from Darktable. And then you have uh, uh, an option to compress the uh, XMP files. The default is only large entries, which is uh, useful if you want to actually um, be able to manually edit the XMP files for one reason or another, or to use them in another, uh, uh, another software. If you do that, you might want to change that to never. And the last option is to uh, force uh, Darktable to look for updated XMP files for all f images on, uh, on startup. Again, you only need to change those if you, um, for some reason, edit your uh, sidecar uh, files either manually or in another, uh, uh, in another uh, software. Next is the miscellaneous preferences. You've got the interface tags, keyboard shortcuts, and others. First, you have the interface settings. The first one is uh, controls how what the mouse wheel scrolls. The default is that this mouse wheel scrolls uh, is used for data entry, and you have to press Control Alt to use it to scroll the module side panel. But you can change that by selecting this option. Uh, next, you have uh, an option to uh, always show the panel scroll bar or only when needed. And the third one is the option to change how the display profile is uh, generated. This is again uh, um, related to color profiling and we will discuss that separately. For the tags, the first one is omit hierarchy in simple tags list. This refers to how the tags are saved in the XMP4 sidecar file. Uh, in uh, Darktable, you have the ability to uh, uh, generate or, or to create hierarchy in your tags. Um, this way, if you have uh, a category, for instance, you can call it, uh, I don't know, water, and under water, you put lots of other tags. You can add them all together by, by adding the whole hierarchy to the to an image however some other programs could not maybe could not be uh, uh, read 
tags in a hierarchical form in the XMP file, so you can disable it here. If you do that, only the last, uh, only the last level in the hierarchy will be added to the XMP file. So, for instance, if you had water and then under that you had rain and river, you, you would only have rain and river in your uh, XMP file. The next one is to disable the entry completion uh, while entering tags via the keyboard. Darktable can uh, uh, complete the entry for you if you want to or give you at least suggestions based on the tags that you've already filled in. If you want to disable this behavior, you can do it here. Next, we have keyboard shortcuts with multiple instances. That's multiple instances of the same module. It uh, governs how keyboard shortcuts will be sent to mod multiple instances of a module. The first one is to prefer expanded instances. That means that the shortcut uh, will well, the keyboard shortcut will be sent to the expanded instances, next enabled, next unmasked ones. You can select them all in, uh, at the same time as well, and so the expanded, enabled, and unmasked instance, instance will take precedence, or expanded and enabled, or expanded or enabled, and so on and so forth. And the selection order goes between the first instance or the last instance of the same module. The next setting is probably the most important setting we're going to learn today, which is to disable the April Fool's game. <laughs> For some reason, the developers thought it was a good idea to put in a game that starts when you launch Darktable on April 1st. If you want to actually get any work done, you'll probably want to disable it. <laughs> next, you have the password storage backend to use, which is the utilities that dark, uh, dark uh, table can use to store password that you enter in. Honestly, I did not know that dark table had any of these capabilities in this other section until today. I've never been prompted by uh, dark, dark table to uh, enter any password. It's probably related to interfacing with other services, but I haven't used it before. If you come across it, then here you can set up where you can save your passwords. And next is the utility to play the audio files. Some cameras have the capability of saving audio files with, uh, with images, maybe for notes or tags or uh, location or whatever you want to add in these. Here you can select which utility to use to play those files with the image. Next we have the shortcuts. You click on the triangle next to a menu or group or category to expand it. And this is all the shortcuts that you can set up. Some of them are not de are not defined, others are defined by uh, uh, by default. This is a good way to actually learn what kind of keyboard shortcuts you could use, but as well to change them if they don't work for you. You could as well export them and import them and revert back to default. And you can use the search module here to actually go through them because if you want, if you if you know what you're looking for, it's easier to search than to actually go through them one by one. It's very handy as well to export them once you've got something that's working for you. If you reinstall Darktable or if you install another uh, instance on another computer, you'd be able to import all of your settings in one go. Next, we have the presets. This screen allows you to. Um, manage all the presets that you've s that are s defined in for modules so you've got the default presets that come with a module but you've got all the presets that you might have created yourself and this will allow you to manage them from here and to import them and export them from uh, fr from another instance of dark table for example, if we go into local contrast, 
we've got a preset that we created in a previous uh, video if you want more information about how to create presets please refer to the dark room uh, uh, video in this series we discussed that in details and we created this extreme contrast pref uh, preset and local contrast as you can see the difference here is that this one doesn't have the little lock around next to it the, the uh, default ones that come with the uh, with the modules are locked but if I double click on this one I will be able to change all the settings for that preset well that's it for this time we went through all of the preferences I hope that you found it uh, enjoyable and useful feel free to leave any uh, corrections or suggestions that you might have in the comments below and until next time bye bye